Niobrara's QRIO is used to control Allen Bradley Universal Remote I.O. from Emoticon Quantum PLC. The quantum rack in this example consists of a power supply, CPU, and QRIO. The Allen Bradley rack has both discrete and analog I.O. A simple control panel is connected to the I.O. with three input switches, an analog voltmeter, and two analog pots. Simple logic in the Quantum PLC controls the outputs. Removing the ASB allows us to inspect its configuration as well as the rack's dip switches. The rack's dip switches configure the word mapping for the I.O. Switch 5 is on and 6 is off, which sets the rack up for one slot addressing. Switch 1 is off, so the I.O. will go off when the controlling signal is lost. The ASB's dip switches configure the unit as logical rack 10, group 0, and 57.6 KBOD. Now we install the ASB and apply power. The Quantum CPU has a simple program done in ProWorks 32. The QRIO is configured as an NOE 771, so we must set aside a few words for the IO scanner's config extension. The traffic cop shows the QRIO set as an NOE 77100 in slot 3. The I.O. scanner is used to define the discrete I.O. data. The IP address block sets the baud rate for the QRIO ports 1 and 2. Both are set to a value 1, which means 57 KBOD. The QRIO supports the normal NOE health block bitmap, and it's installed in slot 3. Each logical remote rack is defined by an entry in the I.O. scanner table. The entry's IP address selects the QRIO port, rack number, group number, and number of words in the rack. This rack contains both inputs and outputs, so the function is set to read-write. The fallback value may be set to zero or hold last value. The inputs and outputs from the rack are mapped into inputs and coils in the PLC to make the logic easy. The read from and write to registers are ignored, so are left at one. The block lengths are both set to 8 to match the rack word count. The latter logic for this example is very simple. Network 1 shows the three inputs connected to the physical switches controlling some output coils. As we change the switch positions, we see the outputs follow the logic. Let's look at the 1x inputs as we change the switches. Now let's look at the 0x coils as we change the switches. The rest of the logic is for the analog inputs and outputs. Network 2 simply copies the analog input 1 to analog output 1. MSTR blocks must be used to configure and control the analog I.O. A timer is used to trigger the MSTRs, which read and write the analog I.O. Each MSTR is latched on until it is successful or ends with an error. The control block, which starts at register 100, defines this transaction as a write of 13 words, defines the slot and port of the QRIO, and the rack and slot number of the analog card. The data transferred to the analog card starts at register 120. Register 120 is the actual analog output value. The value is limited to a range of 0 to 4095 and is being copied directly from analog input 1. As we turn the pot, the value changes through the possible range. Registers 121 through 123 control outputs 2, 3, and 4 on this card, but we are not using them in this example. The rest of the registers set up the card, including its scales of 0 to 4095. Network 4 has the MSTR used to read the analog input card. The control block for the MSTR starts at register 200. The value 2 selects a read operation. The word length is 20. Also defined are the QRIO slot and port and the rack group and slot of the analog input card. This particular analog input card requires configuration. Network 5 is the MSTR used to configure the card. Coil 501 triggers the configuration each time the quantum program is reloaded. The NOBT block lets the analog card itself request reconfiguration using a bit read in 
the MSTR from the previous network. The control block for this MSTR starts at register 300. The value 1 selects a write. The analog input card requires 37 words of data for its configuration. The configuration data starts at register 320 and includes bitmaps for enabling channels and setting their ranges and scales. Note that this analog card requires the input scales to be entered in BCD hex and not decimal. Inputs 1 through 15 are set for plus and minus 4095 so that a 0 to 10 volt input gives a reading of 0 to 4095. Input 16 is set for plus or minus 1000, which gives values of 0 to 1000 for a 0 to 10 volt input. The left knob is wired to analog input 1, which is copied to analog output 1, which is wired to the voltmeter. The right knob is wired to analog input number 16. We can watch the read MSTR data to see if the, see the values change while moving both knobs. Please visit www.niobrara.com for more information.